is a new email service from Basecamp, the company best known for their project management software. Now, this is a very controversial app in many ways. Uh, it's, it's controversial both in terms of how it handles email. It doesn't use IMAP or POP, so you can't use it with any other email client. Uh, it's, it's kind of a layer on top of email that does some really custom stuff. So if you're using Hey, you have to use Hey, the web service and the apps on all platforms. And if you're using something like Gmail or Outlook, you can't use that in Hey. Now you can forward messages in, but you can't actually just use it like you would an app like Spark or Apple Mail or something like that where you can insert emails from multiple services. The service is also $99 per year and there's a two week trial and you can use that two weeks to try it out in full and use it. You can see at the top of this page, I am actually a couple days into my trial. I haven't decided if I'm gonna buy it or not yet. I, I'll, you'll, we'll, you'll kind of see why I'm conflicted as we go on, but I wanted to do a demo of kind of an overview of what Hey is and how you're meant to use it and how it's working for me. So right off the bat, we have this home screen and you're on the inbox. And so they, uh, they made a big deal about this. Inbox is not a typo. It's your inbox, but it's your important mail is supposed to go in here. So the things from people you know, the things that you always want to hear about right away, the emails that you don't want to miss, those go in your inbox. And so I only have one right here. I have a breaking news alert from the New York Times. And then you can see my previously seen ones, uh, just a bunch of newsletters mostly at this point, as I'm still very new to the service. I don't have a ton in here. If we go up to the top, there's this Hey button, and this is the main menu in the app. And you can see there's a bunch of different screens you can go to. One nice thing is that there's keyboard shortcuts. So you can hit one, two, three, four, five, or six to go to one of these pages. And so we're on the inbox right now. I'm gonna go to the feed. And so the feed is an interesting place. This is where you can go to see like your newsletters, the things that aren't really important, but you do wanna get. And so you can kind of go through here and see those emails all at once. You can see they're really cut down down so you don't have these super long emails taking up a bunch of space. If you want to see more about something, just say see more and it loads the full email and then you can do whatever you'd like from there. So that's where your things that you don't necessarily need to see right away. You won't get notifications for these. They'll just kind of fall into the feed and you can read them when you have time. Now, if we go to paper trail, this is where you put things like receipts. So if you get a receipt from a store, that goes in your paper trail. I have a declined card transaction from a uh, from my health insurance provider. Apparently I used my card to buy something they didn't approve. So whatever, that's in my paper trail and I can go back to it later. Now I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcuts. I'm gonna hit one and that takes me right to the inbox again. Now there's two other places I wanna show you, three kind of. Next one is the screener. So you see this alert up here, the screen alert that says screen five first time senders. And so this is one of the things that makes Hey different. So with most email clients, by default, anyone can get into your inbox. They can send you an email and you'll see it. And if you wanna block them, you can block them or you can mark them as spam or you can do whatever your email provider allows. But with Hey, the default behavior is to not let them in. They have to go through the screening process. So every time someone emails you for the first time, it doesn't hit your inbox, it doesn't hit your feed, it just hits the screener page. And so if I go into this, I can see five emails that have come from different places and I can mark them yes or no. Can they email me or not? And so I can just go through here and click yes or no on each one. If I do click yes, I can hit this little Chevron thing here and that'll let me choose where I want it to go. If you just hit yes, it'll go to the inbox, but it, maybe it's a newsletter, it goes to the feed, paper trail, if you know it's always gonna be receipts. And here's the first problem that I run into <laughs> is that there's these three categories that make sense conceptually to me. The inbox is where important things I wanna see all the time are, the feed are where less important things go, and then the Paper trail is where receipts go. And so this works in general, but if we look at someone like Sonos, Sonos could give me multiple types of emails. So this one is download the new Sonos app, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about this email. I can actually click it to go into it and I can see the email and then decide here, but this is a marketing email. So what I would instinctively do is say it goes to the feed, but I've bought things from Sonos before. And so I don't want all Sonos emails to go to the feed. If I have an order that's shipped, I wanna get that in my inbox. If I get a receipt, I want that in the paper trail. So what do I do with this one? And so what I'm finding I'm doing more often than not is just saying, yes, add it to the inbox. And so everything gets in the inbox and then I filter them as they come in, which isn't very different from say, having a Gmail account, everything is your inbox. And then you kind of label them as receipts or something else. And so 
I feel like I'm struggling to find all of the advantages of this three area system because lots of my emails are going to be different things uh, depending on like what happens. Like this is a very common thing for stores. You buy something from them, you get a receipt right away, and then you're on their mailing list. And so those like subsequent ones, you want to go into the feed, the first one in the inbox, but that is also a receipt. So you want it to go <laughs> in the paper trail. So you can kind of see how confusing it can be. So I'm not going to do the rest of these right now, but you kind of get the idea. Um, but the important thing I guess here is that if you say no, then these emails from this address will never hit your inbox, your feed, or your paper trail ever again. There's a way you can go see these. There's a page that says, show me my screened email so you can see what ones are being blocked, but it's not front and center. Basically, if you say no, it's gonna block them from accessing you. They'll have no idea. The emails will still deliver, um, but they won't actually show up in the UI very easily for you. Now we're back on in the inbox. You can see that Sonos app is right here. There's actually a binoculars icon here. And if you hover over it, you can see it blocked spy trackers from this email. So that's one of the things that Hey does for privacy purposes. It blocks tracking pixels and images and stuff like that so that these companies can't see when you open emails. That's nice. Um, it's not a huge deal for me, but it is a nice privacy feature. And I think if I click into it, yep, you can see up here, you're protected. We blocked a spy tracker on this thread and you can click this to kind of see a description. They link to a page that describes it more. So that's pretty cool. The last two places I want to go are down here. And these are the reply later and set aside ones. And so I have email saved here already. And basically the reply later are emails that you saw and want to reply to later. I'm not ready to reply now, but I know I have to reply. So you can build up a queue of emails to reply to. Same with this. So this is the set aside board. This is similar. These are emails that I want to see, but I don't want to see them right now. I want to look at them later. It's kind of like a reading list almost for your email. Uh, it's not things I necessarily need to reply to. Two of these are newsletters. One of these is a thing I need to take an action on, so I don't need to reply to this email. I need to click a link. But I have these set aside to do something with later. And so they kind of fan out this cool little way. I like the animation. But yeah, those areas are pretty nice. And so, for example, I have this download the new Sonos app. If I want to say, you know what, I do kind of want to watch this or look at this later, I can say set aside. And again, there's keyboard shortcuts for all this. I'm going to hit A set aside and now it's down here in the set aside right next to those other ones I already had so that's pretty cool I really like this part of it this makes a lot of sense to me because this essentially makes a short reading list for me to go through and this lets me have a list of the emails that I need to act on I need to reply to and there's more here that I could go into, but I'm not going to do a full deep dive into the app. Uh, down here in the bottom right, we have a keyboard shortcut cheat sheet. So you can see uh, what you can all do from here. So you can see kind of H brings up the menu here. If I go back, I can just, you know, see all the things that I've got going on. Uh, at the top, we've got a search box. And so I can do things like search for uh, Sonos. And so that'll bring up contacts with Sonos in the name, messages. Uh, one of the things I actually really like is if I click into a contact, so here's uh, Sonos and the name is email.sonos.com, which isn't very friendly. So what do I do? I click on that and I'm gonna say, oops, I'm gonna do Sonos Marketing, rename. So now whenever I get emails from them, it's gonna say Sonos Marketing. Additionally, I can edit the contact and so it will pull in some brand logos, but it doesn't get everything. And I can upload a photo if I have one instead. And so I could have the Sonos logo here. If it's a person, I could put a picture of them. So that's really nice. And what's really cool is if I get Sonos emails from multiple addresses, then I can add them all here. So I can have multiple emails from the same company show up together so that when I look at Sonos in my contact information, then I see everything from them. And that's really cool. You can also see from this page, I can say, see these are delivering to the inbox. I can change that to any of these and I can turn on notifications. So by default, no contact will notify you. As far as I can tell, there's no way to make it so that everything hitting your inbox gets a notification. There's no notifications in Hey, unless you explicitly say you want them. And so I could say, notify me for Sonos marketing emails. And then there we go, that's on. If I ever wanna turn it off, just turn it off. Now, one of the other cool things are files. And so there's not gonna be a lot here. These are just a couple files that were in emails, but these are files that have been attached to your emails that either you sent or were sent to you. And you can kind of filter these down, only show me images. There we go. And 
you can see specific things. You can search for ones from only specific people. So there's some cool stuff there. And one of the nice things, and this is one of the reasons that the service is $100 a year, is that it gives you 100 gigabytes, I believe that's right, 100 gigabytes of storage. So when you attach an item to an email, let's say you drag it into an email you're composing. Let me go back to my inbox and say write. So if I'm composing an email, I can attach a file or I can just drag it in here and it's going to upload it to Hey so that Hey can serve the file for me. So it's not attached necessarily as a traditional attachment. It's a file that can be downloaded. So if you drag in a one gigabyte <laughs> video file or something that you're sharing with someone, you can totally do that. Just drag it into the compose window let go, it'll upload. It'll take a little while to upload to Hey servers, but when the person you're sending it to gets that email, they can click that link, get a download right away. It can be nice and fast, and you don't have to bring in something like Dropbox or Google Drive or something and get a public link. You just drag it into your email where you're already working. I think that's really, really cool. It's a really, really nice thing to have uh, from your email provider. And that's it. There's more to talk about. I could kind of go into the profile. I could go to the forwarding setup. You can forward email into Hey to get up to speed. So you can forward your Gmail, Outlook, Apple Mail, whatever you've got into Hey so that you can kind of treat it that way. Uh, if you reply, it's going to come from your Hey address. But for like newsletters and stuff, it's really nice to just get them in here automatically and get up to speed really quick. And then if you give up on Hey, you can forward it out somewhere else. Also, you can download your data at any point. So you can export it and then import it into whatever app you want. So that's really nice. You can export your contacts. So you're not stuck in here if you decide it's not for you. There's some other stuff in here. You've got drafts, contacts, screener history. So you can see I'm really screening in everybody <laughs> at this point. Pretty much everybody is allowed in. So that's hey that's an overview of the main features i hope that they iterate on this quite a bit i didn't get to show you the ios app the android app the windows and mac apps and linux apps are basically just electron apps showing this interface so they behave basically the same uh, i'm disappointed in the ipad app the ipad app doesn't have any keyboard shortcuts right now which is really disappointing especially because the windows ver or the uh web version has tons of shortcuts but yeah i hope that they keep iterating on this i hope that all the drama that's going on with them right now can subside and they can keep working on this product and making it better because i think it has a lot of potential it's not quite there for me right now yet but i'm trying to figure out if i want to uh invest in this tool right now because i think there is a lot of potential here i like a lot of the stuff they're doing but some of the stuff just isn't working quite right for me yet and we'll kind of see how that plays out but yeah thank you so much for watching this summary of hey